Okay, I seem to be recording. Right, I just had a PM from somebody asking me. Um, it's something I've been asked several times for my thoughts on antinatalism. So I want to give my thoughts on antinatalism. I kind of put off doing this video because um, Anna Cantavad has done this ridiculously long video series, like a hundred videos on the same fucking subject. That's got to be some kind of world record. Um, so you've either you either, you've either got to take your hat off to him or he wants locking up for being just a little bit obsessive there for making a hundred video series. Um, I won't say I advise you to go and watch his video because there's a hundred in the series. But what I will say is I didn't want to make a video while that series was ongoing. That series is finished now and I wanted to give my thoughts on antinatalism. But what I want to do because what I want to give you is the, the big head scratcher that I have with the whole undertaking. So what I want to do for the basis of this video is to embrace antinatalism let's just say it's all true let's say the suffering isn't worth it let's say that we should we don't have the moral responsibility for bringing new agents into the world that could end up suffering so we haven't got the moral responsibility and in any case the balance of suffering over enjoyment the scales are pointing the wrong way or whatever i'm not going to bother arguing with either of those two points i'm just going to accept them I hope that the people who are watching this video, well, let's see, let's see if you'll ha accept <clears throat> the point that I want to make. The point that I want to make is this, is that different people in society, the uptake of the acceptance of antinatalism is going to depend on a few factors. And I contend that the people who are keenest to have children are the people that are, statistically speaking, going to be less likely to accept the, the, the ideas of, of antinatalism from a philosophical perspective that if you really couldn't give a crap about having children in the first place that you're more likely to be receptive to the idea if you're desperate to have a family then what you may do is even if you understand the concepts of antinatalism and perhaps you have some sympathy for it you'll just reject it because you want to have you're so desperate to have a family so I think you would see some correlation there the more keen people are on having children the less keen they're going to be on accepting antinatalism. And just let me say at this point, I saw it in, in Mendham at one point talking on the Magic Sandwich show. I didn't really feel they gave him a fair hearing, I have to be said. So I, I agree on that perspective. I thought they gave him a bit short shrift on some of that. But he made the point there that people aren't interested in having children. They're interested in fucking. They're interested in having sex. I think that's an absolute load of shite. That part of what he said was an absolute load of shit. People are interested in having children. That's why some mothers who lose a child abduct other children. People are, people are interested in having sex, but they are also desperately interested in having children. As a, having a sister who's an IVF who was depressed for years because she couldn't have children. It wasn't because she couldn't have sex, it's because she couldn't have children. Have you not seen the footage of these, um, I don't know, it's on something like South Georgia near the Antarctic or something like that. One of these islands, all the birds are in this colony. And some of the birds lose their, the mothers lose their little fledglings, the poor little things. And what these birds do, they actually go and kidnap another fledgling from another mother bird now these birds aren't interested they're not doing that because they want to have sex they're not having sex with the fledgling they're stealing the fledgling because they want a little fledgling to bring up i do think we have a desire to have sex but we do have a desire to have children and i think that varies some people have a stronger desire than others and that those that have the weaker desire are more likely to accept antinatalism so far so good let's have a drink so this is my point then if we accept that antinatalism is true where would we go from there where would we go from that position towards in the long term minimizing suffering by reducing the population down to nothing two ways of doing it one we could do the kind of doctor evil thing and create some kind of virus that just wipes everybody out uh, with a ha 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 sort of mad cackle type thing or we could go about convincing people but how would you do that well it seems to me that most of one of the one of these things these antinatalists seem to do is to just go around espousing antinatalism and that may convince the odd person 
uh, not to have children. But in terms of effectiveness, not, a, not only is this as about as effective as pissing and playing with the steam, I propose that what you're actually doing is you're removing from the gene pool statistically speaking a disproportionate number of people who don't really give a crap about having children anyway because as we've suggested there's this correlation between how likely you are to have children and how likely you are to accept antinatalism so here is my suggestion antinatalists for what you should do if in the long term you want to minimize the human population minimize the amount of suffering rather than not having any children of your own have as many children as you possibly can furthermore for somebody like Gary for God's sake become a sperm donor the chances are that your drive to have children scratch that and add lack of drive to have children and hence your receptiveness towards anti antinatalism may well have a genetic component and the more that you can spread those genes within the gene pool on a long-term basis the more success you are likely to have with people uptaking your idea of antinatalism and antinatalism really taking off as it stands all you're going to do is weed out those people who are least interested in having children statistically speaking and more interested in accepting or more receptive to accepting antinatalism so you're going to distill a population you're actually acting as an extra selection pressure to select for individuals that want to have children even more than statistically on average they do now which could over the long term lead to people having even bigger families and even more suffering so that's what I think I think you're going about this totally the wrong way if you're an antinatalist and you think I'm wrong on that well here's your chance to come back at me I'm sure that plenty will this is a uh, quite a contentious subject thank you for listening did this all in one take first take brilliant stuff bye for now